In this video, we're going to be looking at this voltage reducer. This takes a standard XT60 connection and reduces it down to a little barrel plug like this. Now, why would you want to do this over using something like the Fat Shark battery that comes with your goggles or a homemade battery that you can make yourself with your own voltage checker? Right? Yeah, there we go. Well, the reason is because if you're using used batteries like I am out of used laptops, then your batteries aren't going to last very long. They, well, maybe if you got good ones, but mine seem to last for about two hours and then they're usually dead and I got to switch over to another battery. Now, it's not a big deal except for charging these batteries is kind of a pain unless you have something like this smart charger and this can charge 18650s across this way and double A's and triple A's, but that's a topic for another day. This uses 18650s, this uses 18650s. With this connection here, we can use up to a 5S battery, and I haven't tested it with a 6S, but it might work, but you're reducing a lot of voltage, and so it might get too warm to be stuck inside of this. So on this one, I use my uh, quadcopter battery. This is a Panda 1300 for us, and this is what I actually race with, but even when I'm, even if I have another battery that can't output uh, high, high voltage without sagging, well, that's a perfect candidate for this because this is not going to dry high voltage off of it. So anyway, we're going to look at putting one of these together today in this video, and hopefully it outputs 9 volts when we're finished. <laughs> <laughs> to put this together, we're going to use a voltage reducer from 24 down to 9, and it's a set 9. It's not adjustable, and that's what I want because I can't mess it up then. Also, some 18-gauge wire and some 3D printed pieces that are on Thingiverse. And there are some links down in the description for these. It's a top and a bottom piece. We need an XT60 connector and we need a cable that's long enough to run down to your pocket. Now the reason you want to run this in your pocket is because you don't want this giant battery sitting up by your head. Which is also another good reason not to use the 18650s because this is sitting by your head too. And if you have any problems, well... <laughs> Good luck to your head. Well, this is just a 12 volt power plug off of an old D-Link uh, router. Now you don't have to get a 12 volt uh, output source on this if you don't want to. All that really matters is that this plug fits into your goggles. Now if it's not outputting 12 volts, don't plug it into your goggles while it's plugged into the wall. All we want is the long cord off of this and you want to measure it from about where you're going to plug it in and then run it down your back and then into your pocket and add on a few more inches just because you want it to be a little bit long rather than too short because <laughs> that would be bad. So I'm going to get this thing cut off and we'll start putting this thing together. The next thing we're going to do is try to tear this apart just a little bit, the two wires, strip off a little bit and we're going to try to figure out which side is the positive wire. Now usually you'll have a white line or something that makes the one look different. In this case it looks like it's just a little rough pattern right here. And usually this means that this is the positive side and the negative is usually the solid color. So, but we'll test it here in just a second and make sure. Here's a multimeter and I got it set for continuity. So we should hear that if it is continuous. So I'm going to just plug one in into the middle here and we'll try to figure out which one is the positive. Now, guessing, like I said, this one has a little bit of rough stuff on the wire. It goes all the way down. This is probably the positive, which it is. And this side over here is the negative. So if I hold this up here to the outside of the uh, connector. Yep, there it is. Yep. So the outside, so the solid piece of wire is the ground and the piece with the little, little rough stuff on it is the positive. So that's very, very important. You don't want to get it backward because you will probably fry your goggles and then you'll have a hard time explaining to Fat Shark support why your goggles are fried. So here I stripped off a little bit on the ends and I'm going to go ahead and tin these up. And we'll get this voltage reducer out of here. And like I said, this is uh, it reduces down to nine volts. So here we can see it has the in and the out. So this is going to be output to the goggles. So they're going to solder on to this top side up here. And both of these two here, the two top pieces, they're both connected together. And both of these two bottom ones are connected together. So when you solder it, if it spreads out over both of them, then that's not a big deal because, like I said, they're connected anyway. And this on the inside here, this is where we're going to connect up the XT60 connector coming in to into this. So on here, I'm going to tin up the inner um, holes on here because ideally that's where I want the power wires to go because then it's a little bit easier to manipulate inside of the uh, 3D printed piece. 
And if I didn't mention it before, there's a link to the 3D printable piece that's out on Thingiverse for free. I'm going to go ahead and tin up the other side of this also where the input wires are going to go. Those are tinned up all right. So the next thing I'm going to do is, is go ahead and put this inside of this connect inside of the uh, 3D printed piece here. And I want to make sure the N is pointing toward the XT3 XT60 connector. I almost said 360. All right, goes inside there like that. Just kind of push it down in, and it should set down in there pretty low. And then the XT60 connector is going to sit right in here. And there's a little piece inside here that's going to keep it from sliding in too far, so it shouldn't slide in any further than that. And it's, it's far enough away from the PDB board, or from the voltage reducer, that it shouldn't make any contact. So I'm going to go ahead and um, tin up the wires on here. And when I do, I'm going to solder these on. And when I do, I'm going to hook them on. Which side is the positive? can't remember. <laughs> so I'm going to make sure that I put them on this direction, though. I, wanted to, I don't want to put it like this because it's going to run right to the XT60. So I'm going to put it on this direction, and I'm going to wrap, I'm going to bend this wire around to connect up to the XT60 connector. So this wire is going to be pretty short once it's actually installed in here. So this is in place now, it's all soldered up. Now we don't want any extra wire hanging out past the end of these metal things, because like I said, it's gonna be pretty close inside of there, so we don't want any chance of it shorting out. So I got that and I'm going to go ahead and trim off a little bit off of here and tin them up and then we'll solder them onto the voltage reducer. Remember, you want to connect the positive to the positive and the negative to the negative on this end. The plus is the positive, so make sure you put, put the red wire on this side here. Don't get them backward, that would be, that would be bad. Now with this connected on here, I'm gonna make sure this fits in here. Go ahead and push it down in. And I twisted these wires around to shorten them a little bit more. And also I wanted to have the positive on the positive side. So if it does short up there, it's going to short with the side that it's supposed to short with, which is more than fine. That's okay. So it looks like it's fitting fine. And it may be touching a little bit in there. Okay, but that's all right. We're okay. It's all good. That's what we want to do. It is a touching. Oh, it's not even touching. Okay, good. So the next thing to do is to solder on our extra piece up onto the other connectors up here in the front. And we're going to have them come out the little hole here. And we'll see how this goes. This side here is the positive and this side is the negative. There's little indicators in there or little printed pieces that tell us that it is a positive and negative. And like I said, you don't want to get it backward. Don't get it backward. Don't overthink it, but don't get it backward either. We are in business. Okay, the solder points look good. So we'll call it good enough. And again, we're gonna check this again before we plug it into anything. Make sure we got the positive and negative uh, on the right side because we don't wanna put them in backward. All right, everything fit in there pretty nicely. And here's the top piece. It's just gonna go up here and cover all of that up and make it look nice. Nice and pretty. To help alleviate a little bit of the pull, I pushed the wires in here and I bent them down and then they kind of bend out and go up to the voltage reducer. So when we fill this full of hot glue, like I said, we wanna make sure that we're, when we tug on this accidentally or on purpose, hopefully it's gonna put some of that strain on the hot glue and less on the pads themselves. All right, there I got a hefty amount of hot glue inside there. Another thing I'm going to do, go ahead and pop this XT60 connector out. I'm going to put a little hot glue in here, and I'm going to try to hot glue this thing back in there. So that'll just help it keep it from sliding around too much. When you're putting the XT60 connector in, you want to make sure you put it in uh, down a little bit and then slide it forward because you really want it to catch that little lip that's inside there. And this is just a little extra piece I had. It's <laughs> just because it's easier to grip onto this when it's plugged in. So I got the hot glue up in the front and a little hot glue in the back holding the XT60 connector in place. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a little hot glue up here and uh, a little bit more up here in the front. And, that's gonna, and then I'm gonna put this on and sandwich it all together. And it should hold together okay for now. Bob's your uncle. 
There we go. All right, so that is pretty much put together and finished. The only thing that's left to do is to get some shrink wrap and put around this, and that way it'll help hold it all together. You could also, like I'm going to do here in a minute, put electrical tape around it to hold it together if you don't have shrink wrap. If you're gonna use shrink wrap, you probably wanna use something that's about 70. It'll make it look kinda of nice, like this one. And uh, it'll be nice looking. Now another idea that I came up with is it'd be nice if you had a voltage uh, checker in here. Well, a lot of your batteries, when you plug them in, they uh, you're gonna have this little balance lead right here. So you can get a voltage checker and put it right up here and just tape it down to the uh, to this or put it inside the shrink wrap and just make it a permanent piece of this. And that way when you plug this in, you plug that in, just leave it in your pocket and then when it starts beeping, you'll know because <laughs> it'll be going off loud. All right, so we'll check the battery voltage here real quick to make sure that the voltage is okay. And uh, we're at 15.5. So we're fine on the battery. I'll go ahead and plug this into the wall or into the connector here we just finished. It doesn't look too bad with the electrical tape on there. <laughs> so, all right. So here we'll plug this into, we'll put the red one in the middle so it comes up positive instead of negative. All right, we'll put this on here and it looks like we're getting out about nine volts. So this is doing exactly what it's supposed to do. It's outputting nine volts. So, like I said, the better thing to do is get another uh, voltage checker, plug your cable into it. This thing can fold up, go in your pocket, and then you can run this long cable now, and it can go up the back of your shirt and out your neck hole, and then plug into your goggles, and you'll have you know as much battery juice as you can carry in your pocket. Also, if your battery goes dead, you can pull another battery off of a quad you just finished racing because it's probably not dead enough yet. Plug it into here and then have a little bit more time to fly. Anyway, if you have any questions about this, I have tested this and it does work. Well, not this one, I tested my other one. But it does work and I have it, and I am able to fly a lot longer and I feel a less uh, stress about getting charged batteries for my goggles. Anyway, if you have any questions about it, leave them down in the comments and I'll try to help you out as best I can. And as always, Thanks for watching. All right, ultimate test. Here we go. We'll plug this in. Please, goggles do not explode. Oh, yeah. Video is live.